So hi, my name is Nils, and this time we're going to go over of uh, carbon ceramic breaks that nobody in Keyshot history has ever covered on a YouTube stream or any kind of stream in that matter. So our case is to get the main texture going, then have... Uh, specularity map going as well so it can be refractive and on top of that we're gonna have small swirls within the textures uh, of the break disk actually giving small grooves of the breaking itself so I've gone over it on this model as well but we're just gonna entirely discard this this is not good. So our first goal, since we have selected the part, we're gonna go into a polished material and we're just gonna add metal polished. So this is a, basically a chromium kind of material that we're just gonna use as a base where we can actually construct our main material from. So We are going to go into carbon ceramics. Uh, wait, let me search it from the NAS. Ceramic. Yep, it's going to load for a while. Yeah. Still loading, still loading, still loading while we're at it. Okay, we finally found the map within my NAS. So I'm going to just edit the material and add a texture to it. I'm going to drag and drop it from here to the color. Since this map is quite large in terms of the actual mapping itself, we're going to tone it down a little bit. Uh, what I highly recommend is when you go into the Google search for images, you Google um, Bugatti Chiron, you Google RS7, RS6, break disks, R8 break disks, and that will give you a quite good reference on how you can get your ceramic breaks. This is what I usually do. Uh, Audi RS6 ceramic breaks, and I take in this image. And here is what I see in terms of carbon ceramic breaks. So as we can see from behind, there is a carbon ceramic texture. There is specularity map as well. And there are swirls of the brake caliper. You can probably see it from here. There is the brake base texture. There is some specularity in terms of reflection. And there are swirls as is included in here. Base texture, specularity, and swirls. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we have the base texture set, but it's not quite looking good. So we're going to just add a bump map. So we're going to use the same texture and use its ceramic break texture. So this is the main one. So it seems that it's too defined. It's too... It's bumping too much. So we're going to tone it down so we can get more reflections out of it. I'd say at 0 0.2 is quite good. So we're going to compare the two. 
sounds about right. I'm going to tone it down even more. But you can also go into the roughness, which actually defies the roughness of the main material. So as we can probably tell from this point on, that this is too refractive. So we are toning it down just a little bit so we can get it more f kind of flatter and so on. So this sounds or looks about right. Maybe just a little bit more down. 0 0.22 or 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.02 looks about right. So this is our main texture behind. But when we go into textures, yeah, we're just limited into just two textures. This is where labels comes in. So we're going to add another label. We're just going to use uh, any kind of label we want. Yada yada yada, we don't actually need it, but then we're going to go into the diffuse and we're going to turn these off in the meanwhile. And we're going to turn it to the part and we're going to turn off sync. Synchronization basically means that whatever kind of texture you're trying to move in here will actually be shown moving the same direction as this label is. So to con to comply with this confliction we're just gonna have to turn off sync. So we're just gonna delete this texture because it didn't work at all for us and we're gonna add another texture we're gonna take another map we're gonna replace it with the main texture I'm going to turn off uh, the main textures as well so we can actually see what we're actually doing with the label. So sync off, repeat, horizontal, repeat, vertical. We're going to go box, we're going to depart, and then we're going to tone it down. So that looks about right. Then we're going to add the bump map and we're going to add this as a specularity map. So these are synchronized within the scene, within this texture. And we're going to turn off from plastic to metal. Then we're going to turn it down to 1.26 for example. And we're going to turn it down from the bump map to bump height. And we're going to add a little bit of roughness. So basically we're duplicating what is actually in between or underneath the map. And doing it within labels. And this reflectivity sounds about right. We're going to tone it down the bump map to 0 0.22 for example. Or 0 0.128. And... This seems about right, but we're liking the swirls. So what we can do from here is go to another car of mine. Nope. Nope and use a classical old break disc bump map and with this new label we're obviously going to turn off sync and this planer is going to go to box after that it's going to go into metal Yep. Part or UV perhaps? Nope. Box. So we reset the swirls here. But the bump height is too much at this point. So we're going to turn down the bump map.
and now okay so this seems about right 0 0.0594 so we're going to go into textures and we're going to set opacity because we want the bottom material to shine through it so that is the texture that is the specularity map and that is actually the bump map itself so we're going to try on with uh, like 20% 0.5% of specularity map so we can combine the texture that is shining from behind with the bump map which is actually on top of that material okay 0.5% not too much I say like 15% nope 20% Okay, let's say 60%. Around like 60% is where the actual things start to happen. So as you can probably tell, we have the carbon soaring uh, texture underneath. We have the specularity as well and bump map underneath. And then we have the swirls up to break caliper itself, which is actually making the grooves. And we, when we go to look at it from this angle this is exactly what we want to achieve so this is carbon ceramic working with labels so label textures and then we can play around with the color and the con contrast of it then we can play around basically you're just gonna have to play around on what you're trying to achieve is it really important to have those grooves is it really important to have the bump map is it really important to have the specularity and so on and so forth so you're just gonna have to play around with it um, we can go on to this material here and I can tell you exactly the values which in this HRI are actually making these grooves and textures themselves. Okay. I hope you can screen cap this. Same goes for the bump. Synchronization is on for that map. Bump height 1. Go on to labels and go to the main material. So these are planar. Yep, and bump. One. After that, there is metal with the opacity of 50% as well, like I did in this one. Yet, although this. Uh, thing is scaled a little bit differently it still confines to the same principles on how to do it so we're gonna scroll down as well so these are actual settings so if you choose to go with the same break this caliper uh, I mean break disc itself in terms of reflections refractions bump maps opacity swirls of the caliper making in well this is basically it this is how you do it so I'm just gonna upload this tutorial as well in uh, with uh, the textures themselves so from that point on and forward you can actually tr try to recreate this carbon ceramic textures within your break this as well because I'm as far as I'm concerned then nobody in the Keisha community has ever done a tutorial on how to create carbon ceramic textures for break discs so I hope this uh, tutorial becomes helpful for you in the Keyshot community. Uh, it helps you to improve within your break disk and details within the model itself. 
and perhaps provides you some more insight in terms of how to create textures, how you can use labels, how you can use bump maps, specularity, and so on, and layers and opacity maps to get what you're actually trying to achieve. So from this point forward, I'll be trying to do some materialization for rims and so on and try to move on to LED lights for the cars or rear and front lights which I have actually done in the past just have to go into my Keyshot webinar as well to get more details on how you can achieve these kind of situ uh, or basic principles on how LED lights work in dielectric and uh, cloudy plastics mode and from there on you just can learn from yourself uh, on how you can achieve that goal by tweaking your material it's just not about drag and drop all the time that people have become used to at this point in time it's more like you take the one material and you tweak it up to the point where it actually try to tries to make sense for the actual product that you're trying to actually render or try to achieve the kind of goal within details that it would actually please the end result for you as a creator and the client that actually demands a kind of quality and detail from you. So yeah, I hope this provides some usual uh, good insight into what you can actually achieve within uh, the Keyshot environment itself. It's not just about Corona and VRA and so on. It's not about what you can do within the render engine. It's how you can utilize it to become your workhorse. That's the main goal in any kind of render engine you want. You could basically achieve any kind of goals that you want in any kind of render engine you want it's just these little little like features and so on and your apparent um, ability to change the materials within your scene to actually get the realistic approach to the real materials within the real world um, so yeah, this is uh, my small but yet I hope informative tutorial for you guys to go out within Keyshot and try to achieve the same goals. Uh, keep in mind that these textures will be linked into a Google Drive link beyond uh, below this video in the description. Uh, I hope this provides uh, usual, uh, useful information for you to help uh, uh, tweak your Keyshot experience in terms of automotive rendering and so on. And from my perspective, this is it for me. And I hope you will have good results. And if you have something to share or something to ask, then feel free to contact me on YouTube or send me an email uh, with uh, the link in the descrip description as well to my email. So from this point on, have fun. Do what you got to do. Try to make it as realistic as possible. Try to be innovative. Uh, try to be ambitious about your materials. Try to achieve the most realistic, realistic way possible to it. And yeah, I'll talk to you in the next one. So I'll let you know when the next uh, tutorial is out. So <laughs> have fun guys and uh, I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.